everyone. Welcome to today's news conference. One announcement before we begin. Remember, tonight's player interviews will be in here at 6 o'clock tonight. 6 o'clock. Okay, with that said, we'll now begin the news conference. West Virginia head coach, Dana Halgerson. Okay, got uh, excited about an opportunity this week that, that should be a lot of fun for all parties involved. Uh, back to work here this afternoon. Ready to get better on all three sides of the ball and, and prepare for a good Oklahoma State team. And when we look at, when we show, we've already met this morning and we watched a lot of stuff on all three sides of the ball. And <laughs> one of the things that keeps coming up is, is, is it's like we're looking in a mirror because of what they do offensively, what they do defensively, what they do uh, from a special team standpoint. As many of you know, there's a lot of crossover. Uh, from the coaching staff. There's four or five guys on our staff that were at Oklahoma State uh, uh, over the last couple of years that, that uh, you know, had, had an input on, on, from a schematic standpoint of, of what you see us doing and what you see them doing. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of familiarity. Uh, we know a lot about their players and, and they know and, and about their schemes and they know a lot about our schemes. There's not many <clears throat> secrets that exist and today's day of time, it comes down to uh, motivation and, and determination and what kind of effort you play with. Uh, give uh, Coach Gundy a tremendous amount of credit for the program that he's built, uh, how things are structured, how things are in place. A lot of the things that we're trying to get accomplished here are things that I picked up when I was, when I was there. Um, you know, with that said, probably the best thing that they do is, you know, they don't worry about injuries so much. They, they, they got a lot of depth, and if one guy goes down, he's, he's, in, he's ingrained in, in his kids' minds to the next guy get up and play. And that's, that's what's got to happen in college football. And if you can replace guys that go down with guys that are of equal talent, then you have a chance to win a lot of football games, and, and, and they've won through us. But so a lot of football games over the last couple of years <coughs> with, with doing, doing it that way. And, 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 and playing old school football from a mentality standpoint, from a effort standpoint, from a physical standpoint. They're a physical football team that plays with tremendous effort for a variety of reasons. They like playing for each other. They like playing for their coaches, for their school, for their uh, for their for their friends and their family. So uh, it, it'll be a challenge. <laughs> Every game in this league is a challenge. We understand that. Uh, looking forward to going over our, uh, this weekend Saturday afternoon game. Should be a Great environment and a wonderful facility. Uh, you know, great, great college football atmosphere that our, our guys need to look towards as a as an opportunity to go play, and an opportunity to get out there and play the game that we all that we all love to play. If you lose sight of that, then you're not doing it for the right reasons. So, but that takes some question. Could you talk a little bit about uh, Coach Gundy? Can you talk just a little bit more about your relationship with him and maybe how he's influenced you as a head coach? Well, we, we competed against each other for many years, you know, eight years. Or he was got there in 2001, if, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, competed against each other for eight years, so it, it's, it, it is what it is. We were competing against each other. and Actually, it's probably more like around ten years. And then I uh, had the opportunity to go work for him, which was a step up from Houston. I uh, didn't, you know, this isn't anything that I haven't quoted on saying in the past, but, uh, you know, left Houston to go to Oklahoma State because it was a different level. It was a different league, uh, you know, and, and knew that he had a lot of things in place that uh, were appealing to me from a facility standpoint, a recruiting standpoint, uh, a program standpoint, and, and went there and, and had a good year. You know, knew there were some pretty good people in place. He, he does a wonderful job from a structural standpoint, from an organizational standpoint, um, you know, as far as how you run the program, as far as what you're – your, 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 your day to day operations are like. And, um, you know, so it took a lot of things from him. And, and then from an offensive standpoint, he took a lot of things from me that we were doing over the course of the previous years that, that fit into what he was trying to do there at Oklahoma State. So it worked out good for both of us. When you went there, were you thinking one year or were you thinking, um, you, know, you know, what was your thought process as far as being there? Yeah, it, you're, you're, you're asking if I was ready to go take another job. Yeah, uh, yeah. So or, or, that was the goal. You know, I felt in order to get 
a job like you know that I'm fortunate to have now, it was going to take being a coordinator at a little higher level. So you know, and, and so I took that opportunity and in and, and, and my conversations with him and and Mike Holder, their AD, who's a good friend and, 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 a, and a great administrator. <laughs> you know, it wasn't going to be I wasn't going to go there for a year and then leave for the same job. You know, so it was, it was going to take a job like this for for me to to leave the situation that I was in. How much has their offense evolved since you were there? Has it changed much or it's still about the same? Yeah, it's, it hasn't changed much at all. It, it's uh, just looking at it on tape, there's there's some specific things that, that, that they do better than what we do. You know, it's the same offense. It's, it's you know, if you, if you look at it very closely, it's, uh, it's called the same. A lot of the routes are the same. There's always going to be tweaks here and tweaks there and a, <clears throat> an added formation or a different run play or a different pass play out of a different set. Um, you know, when they had JW in there for the four or five games that he was in there, did a, did a tremendous job. Uh, but they had a little bit more quarterback run game because that fits his, his style a little bit more than, than Lunt or, or Chelf. Um, but if you look at it, a lot of the same stuff, you know, and it goes back to the scheming aspect of things, not, not being, you know, you're not going to out-scheme many people. You know, the next week when we play OU, we're going to be looking at an offense that's very similar to ours as well. <coughs> so that just exists in this league. Yes. We, we will. Yeah, we, we will. Not not exclusively because there's still things that we got. To, you know, there's always going to be slight differences, and you know we can't just sit here and, and, and pound on each other either for for a whole week. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back on a normal schedule this week. Last week was different because of, of, of the situation, but we'll be back on a normal schedule this week. We will go good on good some. Uh, one because it makes sense, and, and two because we're able to. Do you have to change signs or anything or signaling plays in? Or as always, oh, you do it every week. Anyway. <clears throat> we do it every week anyway, and they're in the same boat. You know, I've watched, you know, I've watched a couple of their TV copies here, and I can call out about ninety percent of their plays. So I'd assume that's uh, something that they're is on their mind as well as it is on our mind. You know, we got to be careful of what we do for both an offensive standpoint and a defensive standpoint. On the call yesterday, you talked a little about the the pass rush and being able to get pressure on you guys using three or four. Can you talk about your offensive line, what those guys are doing, and what your focus is heading into Oklahoma State? Well, there's there's always going to be one on one matchups, <laughs> and, and I, I I wasn't thrilled with how we protected last week. Uh, it, it, it it wasn't just you know there wasn't four or five guys breaking down all the time. It was a guy here or a guy there. Because there's one-on-one -on -one matchups everywhere. If they rush three, <clears throat> you know, there's still going to be one guy that's got a one-on-one -on -one matchup. If they if they rush four, there's going to be four guys that there are three guys that have one-on-one -on -one matchups. We got to win those matchups, you know. And, and that ain't no different than, than defensively playing man-to-man -man coverage. If you're in a man-to-man -man coverage situation, you got to win that one-on-one -on -one matchup. So, uh, you know, if, if they can get there with three. That one matchup is that important, then that's what they're going to do. They get there with four, and that's what they're going to do. You know, we got a lot of our pressure because we added a fifth, you know, which creates five one on one matchups. And, and, and if that's what it takes to get pressure, then that's what you got to do. But obviously, the downside is, is the more you bring, the more space there is downfield. So if you can get there with three, then everybody's going to drop eight. It hadn't happened very often to us this year, though. Uh, Joe said that it was obviously your idea to, to put him up in the box on Saturday. Did that idea come from your experience at all and, and seeing the field from that level, or where did that come from? Oh, a couple of things. One, it just felt like we needed a change. Uh, you know, it, it, I, I thought it would help Joe from uh, <clears throat> you know, just a, a sterile environment. You know, there's a lot of bullets flying on the sidelines, and there's a lot of stuff going on. It's not uncommon for an offensive or a defensive coordinator to call it from the box. It's because it's quiet, <clears throat> you can see better. <clears throat> you know, plus Joe being more of a back end guy than a front end guy, he can see that back end a little bit better than, than he could on the sidelines. Um, you know, yeah, I was, was really happy with how Coach Patterson brought energy on the sidelines. He doesn't have as much to think about. 
So he brought a tremendous amount of energy on the sidelines and, a, and, and, and did a great job of rallying the troops. And, and I thought that was positive as well. You mentioned rallying there. How, how are the guys this week coming off of, uh, obviously, a, a tough loss for you and, and you mentioned focus early on and, and the energy yeah. level? It, it's tough. I mean, it's a tough loss. I mean, I, mean, I, think, I think everybody would agree with that. It's a tough loss. It was tough in that locker room after the game. It was tough to come up here. It was a tough night. You know, Sunday coming in here was a little bit of tough. Uh, we, we got together, I think, 3 o'clock on Sunday, and I told them we got three more hours to be upset. <clears throat> I don't know how else you, 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 you deal with it. So we watched all the tape and then, you know, let them go Sunday. And, and you know, showed up here today, uh, you know, seems like ready to go. We'll find out here out there at practice. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, the biggest challenge is, is defensively just building on what we accomplished. We got better defensively. We, everybody's like, we gave up 39 points. Well, yeah, we did, but we got better. And, and from an operations standpoint, we got better. I mean, we we're off the field about 80 percent of the time on third down. Uh, we created a couple of turnovers. We held them to two yards of rush. I mean, there's a lot of positive things that happened defensively. We got to keep improving on that. Keep building on that. You know, keep keep doing a better job of of communicating the calls and lining up to where we're not misaligned, where we're all on the same page, and we can. <laughs> <laughs> Tough <up> there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, from uh, 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 just just keep just improving on it. You know, in, in special teams, <clears throat> we got to keep improving on it. We made tremendous strides on cover units. Uh, you know, we 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 got a couple of blocks that spring that, that that were able to spring us from a couple of good returns. We got we got to get better. We got to fix our snap. We got to fix our cap our, our, our kick. We got to fix our our our. Uh, our wings, you know, on, on the PAT team. I mean, there's some things that are that we got to fix. That's that's after every game, there's things you got to fix. You're just trying to not fix very blaring mistakes, which there was a few on special teams. And then offensively, we got to get back to where we were about to go. You know, offensively, we're we're a, we're a group that's not very happy right now. <clears throat> when when the last three weeks have been pretty tough defensively for what we faced, well. <coughs> The next four weeks are going to be pretty tough for what we're going to face. So we got to get back to doing what we were doing well a month ago. It's a pretty determined group, I think. Dana, what are those offensive problems that you see, the, the things that you need to fix first with that? Uh, we got to play together. You know, we're playing with, you know, it's the same problem that defensively we're, from a, you know, a call standpoint, we're playing with nine or ten a lot. Well, <clears throat> we're playing with nine or ten from an effort standpoint now. You know, if you got eight, nine guys that are playing with tremendous effort and one or two that aren't, then you're playing with eight or nine. We, we got to play together better. And, and you know, blocking is obviously a huge thing. Uh, <clears throat> you know, trust in the system, trust in the people being in the right spots uh, is, is a big thing. Um, you know, how, how do we explain what nine drop balls? We haven't had nine drop balls all year. And uh, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just execution. You know, we gotta, we gotta execute. And it's harder to execute against tougher teams when you play tougher defenses. And you gotta elevate your game, and you gotta, you gotta, and that's coaching. You know, we gotta get it out of them. You know, when, 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 when things get harder, we gotta play better offensively. We gotta execute better. Have it. We try to do it this week. If they're dropping more guys at the coverage, how much of it is on your run game to, to step up and be able to move the ball better on the ground? Half of it, you know, just because they drop eight doesn't mean they have less people in the box. You know, that, that's a misconception at times. Uh, you know, it, 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 you know they, there are deep safeties, which means we have to run the ball. And we average, what, two yards a rush? It's not good. It's not good. Now we can end you know, it, it's more about us than it is TCU. TCU's pretty good at run defense. Always have been. They're top five, top five team in rush defense. Uh, but we didn't do a great job of finishing blocks. You know, when when we play tougher teams, it gets hard. You got to find a way to get it done, and, and we didn't. So that that wasn't good. But then the other side of that is, is <clears throat> if they're only rushing three, we should have more time to throw the ball. You know, they, they can still have the same amount of people in the box and rush six as they do rush three. So if they're rushing three, then we should have more time to throw the ball. If they're rushing six, then there's less space, there's more space, we should be able to get the ball play. So 
it's not well they're they're dropping three they're they're dropping eight you should be able to run the ball it's the same people in the box you know so we, 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 we you know from a from a scheme standpoint we have the ability to do it we just got to do a better job of executing it and you got any uh explanation or a theory on why home teams are having so much trouble in this conference i mean it's crazy. only won 11 games all year I mean. it's crazy I, I just found that out yesterday i haven't paid much attention to it and to, to know that the home team has lost more than the, that's I, I, parody parody uh, you know there's a lot of good teams uh, a lot of good teams in the big 12. <coughs> um, you know we, we enjoy playing on the road you know, we, we enjoy the travel and, 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 and being with each other and, and, and experiencing new things. I mean, we had a tremendous time in Texas. We had a tremendous time over in Maryland. Uh, didn't have a very good time in Tech. But, uh, <coughs> you know, I mean, it's, we enjoy that. And, and, you know, I mean, it's uh, you got to be able to handle the crowds. I mean, it's still, you know, are we going to be rattled because it's going to be a loud crowd in Oklahoma State? It's the same, same atmosphere that exists here. So I think it's – people aren't going to be uh, – they're not going to be intimidated by that kind of an atmosphere because that atmosphere exists in ten venues in the Big 12, I guess is my answer. Dana, yeah, there would seem to be some sort of a tug of war here, I guess, in expectations where if one side knows the other really well. You know Bill Young and Munkin, but they know you guys. So people would think, well, if you know what they're going to do, you can march up and down do what you want. Other side is they know how to stop you. How does that tend to go when two teams know each other so well as these two seem to? You know, execution. It comes to me. To me, it comes down to you know the effort's got to be there. I mean, it, it, they they play with tremendous effort, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we have to play with tremendous effort, and then just executing. You know, with, which which means finishing blocks, running routes full speed, <clears throat> going through your reads offensively. Checking the proper run based on what the looks you get. <clears throat> you know, throwing and catching, making the catch, getting upfield. Defensively being in the right spot, you have a chance to make a tackle. Well, you, you probably ought to make a tackle. You know, you have a chance to pull the trigger through the quarterback, you better pull the trigger through the quarterback. You have a chance defensively to strip a ball, strip a ball. You have a chance to make a play on the air. Uh, you, 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 you need to make the play. So. It, it can, you know, we're we're going to do our. I, mean, I don't want to put it all on the players. I mean, it, you can't put it all on the players, but our job is to get them in the proper mindset to play uh, determined, to play motivated, to play with tremendous effort. You know, to get the right people out there, try to put them in the right situation that we possibly can, and then at that point, hopefully, we've coached our guys to be able to pull the trigger and make the play. Is that just something where you sit them down and just show them? <clears throat> Either of them or you, and say this is how they play. That's how you play. Be more like this. Is it just like sitting down and talking to them? It's not really out in the practice field stuff so much. No, I, you got to go out there and work on it. You got to go out there and work on it. Um, you know, because again, it, it, we're 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 gonna know what they do. They're gonna know what we do. You know, <clears throat> are we gonna know exactly the correct call that they're gonna do based on some sort of a tip or? based on us stealing their signals or something. I mean, that, that might happen every now and then, but ultimately it's just line up and read keys and play ball. And, and, and you got to coach your guys to do that. We made strides on that defensively of coaching our guys to line up better, communicate better, be in position, and have the proper mentality to be able to trigger. <clears throat> we didn't do a very good job offensively of exactly what I just said as far as getting them lined up right, proper mindset, putting them in position to make a play, and coaching them in a position to be able to make that play. So I'm putting it on the players, but I'm putting it on our coaches to be able to get through the players that they can make that play. Coach, we're, all, we're all in this together. Defense, uh, 47 points away from allowing the most points ever in a single season. Is that is that more of a media focus at this point, or is that maybe something the guys are aware of that could act as an extra incentive heading forward? No, we don't worry about that. I mean, we, we can't worry about what's happened. we got to worry about what's ahead of us. <clears throat> you know, uh, I don't, the last time I was aware of this, that this is the first time West Virginia's ever played in the Big 12. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a league that can score. It's a league that can play good defense. It's a league that can play good football. It's a league that is a whole bunch of parity exists in it. So. 
you know, we we, we got to we got to take what's happened and we got to try to build on it. If we sit here and you know worry about this and worry about that, we'll worry about the wrong things. You've handled the running game pretty well, but you're going to see the best runner in the in the conference this week. Uh, what special problems does he present, and uh, how do you approach it? Joseph Randall uh, is a, is a fantastic football player. He, he was he's one of the favorite my favorite kids I've ever coached. I've had him for one year as a true freshman. And it, it means a lot to him, and he lives it. And, and he's quick twitch. He's powerful. He's very skilled. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He can throw him screens. He can line up as a receiver and throw him the ball downfield. He's a good player. Uh, you know, and you take him out and you put Jeremy Smith in, who is. Downhill, physical, fast, can take it 80 yards like that. You know, so then Oklahoma State's always had good running backs, <clears throat> and, and yeah, it'd be a challenge. We got to play great, sound, you know, sound, be sound in our gaps, and be physical and get off blocks. Uh, it, it doesn't stop there. I mean, Joe Whipline's a pretty good offensive line coach. Uh, has been for two decades, and they've always been good up front. They got guys up front that continuously get better, and they got good depth. So you know, you got guys, you got you know, you're pretty good playing. And you, you, you got guys up front that can block and running backs that can hit it pretty good. Coach, you got against TCU. Uh, what did Ivan McCartney do to start over Stetson? Played better all week. What was your evaluation of uh, Sean Austin? Kind of what he added or how healthy? Presence expect? good. <clears throat> Presence good, mentality good, uh, health not good, not yet, not there. He, he, you guys can see it. He's a different guy now than he was the first couple of games. He, he continued to get healthier. You know, I mean, he was more healthy last week than he was two weeks prior to that, which is why he suited up. Uh, <coughs> so then he will continue to rehab and continue to work through it, practice more, and then we'll play him more. But it, it didn't look the same, which is why we didn't play him very much. Dana, on your, your special teams, you had some guys who either had never played before or maybe never played special teams. From what you saw, I think on the return teams especially, did, did that go better than you even expected, or they out there because they were that good? About the same people. It's about the same people. I mean, we, we, it's, it's about the same people. They just get better at it. Mm -hmm. you know, you're, we're, we're talking about a lot of younger guys. Quidikowski was great on kickoff. Gary Hope was great on kickoff. <coughs> Petaway was, was good at kick. Austin Copeland is another true freshman play for the first time. Is you know getting better, you know, and, and played on all four special teams. I mean, you got to have guys like that. This is what I've been saying for a long time. You got to have a lot of people that can play those special teams and, and get better at it. And I uh, thought thought Coach Dunlap did a great job of that last week. Thought he gave him good keys on the kickoff and and uh, thought we covered punts better than we have since I've been here. Um, <clears throat> You know, in the return game, we got some blocks. They were, they were the number one special teams in the, in the, in the Big 12. They, they were good at covering as well, and we got one out of them. It, it's, it's just the, it's the sour taste in our mouth of the snap and the kick that nobody's happy with. Other than that, I thought we played fantastic special teams, and those young guys can got to continue to get better with that and understand that that's their role and take pride in it, and they are. They're buying into that. Are these other specialists? All right. Appreciate it, guys.